Hello? Uh, a little while ago, we looked at the strongest signatures per weapon Brawlhalla. So let's flip the script around and take a look at the weakest signatures per weapon Brawlhalla. So this will, again, it's just all opinions. But uh, I, I will also, like I did with the best signatures and worst signatures per character, I'll give some suggestions for how I'd like these moves to be changed uh, in the future. So let's start with Scythe. I think the weakest signature on the Scythe is Fate's Downsig, this little teleporting move right here. It has... I'll, I'll turn off those big flashy things. It has a couple things going for it. Number one, it's a teleport move, so you can GC it and get a wall touch like that. Uh, maybe extend a string or catch someone uh, unexpectedly. It has a pretty good hitbox, as you can see. It's pretty lardo here, this slash, and then it has a behind hit as well. So let's say uh, this Azoth is just chilling, and I do it behind, it'll still hit from behind. So those are the pros. The cons, though, are that as we turn on the damage here, we can see it does 20 damage, which is not much at all. That's less than, like, a hammer nair. Um, it... It doesn't have much KO power. This Azoth is at 160. It doesn't really kill. It doesn't really do damage. It's pretty easy to punish. As you can see, I'm mashing my end light here, and it takes a little while. It's telegraphed. It has an audio cue and a visual cue for where it's going to go. Uh, so the risk-reward just really isn't in the favor uh, of reward, in my opinion, in this move. And that's kind of uh, what I'm dictating as what is weak or what is strong. It's like, is it worth the risk? No, not really. If I put this SIG on any other Scythe user's kit, does it make their kit better or does it make it worse? I feel like it makes it worse, so that's why I'm giving it to Fate Down SIG. What is the thing that I would suggest to change? I would suggest two things. Number one, we can keep the damage the same. Uh, 20 damage for a teleporting utility SIG, it makes sense, it's fine, no big deal. Uh, I do think though, a, a cool mechanic, maybe a cool little twist, is that the longer you hold it, the further you teleport. Uh, that could be kind of a cool thing. No other move works like that. It could be, it, it could have something where it just teleports further, uh, maybe along the lines of a Koji down sig, maybe a little bit shorter because of how big the hitbox is. And then also variable force angles, I think could be really cool. So let's say I hit it right in front like this, rather than hitting straight up, it hits straight forward. If I hit the Azoth when the Azoth is jumping, for example, okay, maybe then it hits straight up or maybe it hits at an angle upward. If I hit with the hitbox behind, you know, maybe it hits behind and is like a reverse, like the Yumiko Hammer side sig. I think those would be some cool changes to give it a little bit more utility and make it less of a less of a risky move, because as it is right now, as it stands, top level fates, you will pretty much never see this move used uh, in a high level, super high level tournament match. Or if you do, uh, it's probably only it probably only works because it's never been used. You know, it's kind of one of those moves. So there we go, that, that's first up. I know I keep like repeating my words, but look, I haven't reported a video in a few days, so my voice is, it, it's gone. Um, for cannon, I think the weakest cannon signature is Isaiah's side sig. It has, uh, again, let's look at the pros, let's look at the cons. So pro, it's pretty quick. At, at least uh, you can't see a lot of the startup, like you can't really react to the startup. Unlike Fates, it doesn't have an immediate sound cue, uh, although it does take a little while for the move to come out, so that's what I mean by fast. It has this mechanic, the longer you hold it, the further you go, and the further it's active, although you don't really go that fast. You compare it to a move like Zul Side Sig on the cannon, and it's kind of abysmal in terms of distance and speed. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of a similar thing to Fate, where it's like risk and reward, it's a fine signature, it's not bad, it's just the, it's not really in the favor of the reward compared to the risk. You're vulnerable from the top, you're vulnerable from behind. If we take a look at the hitbox, it's decent, it's a moving hitbox, so the size doesn't really matter too much with a moving hitbox. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, you compare it to Lin Fei's side sig, and Lin Fei's has this bursting jump, right? It, it covers a lot of ground. You compare it to Sidra's side sig on the cannon and Sidra like, jumps her in the air and has a lot of force, right? Like, it, it just doesn't pack the same punch or have the same utility as the other canon characters, and so I just feel like it's a little weaker. And what is the change that I would propose? I think this one's pretty simple. I think if Isaiah just moved faster with the side sig, it would get a lot more utility, or if it just had a little bit more KO power, then it would uh, get more utility. I, I feel like either of those two could uh, really increase the use of this move, because as it stands right now, it's not really that useful uh, when compared to other things. Like, you can just do a downlight, okay, apparently you can't, a, a downlight into Nair, right? Why would you go for the side sig a lot of the time? And if someone's being knocked off stage, you're not going to really do this, because you can do that, right? It doesn't have the same kind of utility as his other sigs, so I think that would be a nice change. 
for Spear. Now this, this is one of my favorite characters in the game. Uh, and unfortunately, I've got to put him in the weakest Spear signature in the game. And that's Dusk. Dusk on his Spear down sig, I think is the weakest Spear sig in the game. For a few reasons. Number one. Well, okay. Again, let's look at her, look at its strengths. Its strength is that it's a grounded Spear kill option, which Spear doesn't really have. It does a decent chunk of damage. It has an alright hitbox, although I would probably put that more into weakness. It's pretty fast. I guess that is the that is a pro. But let's look at the cons. High recovery time. You're kind of stuck here for a while. Kind of measly range. Like this isn't even gonna hit, and I'm not even that far away. Like I at this, uh, why would I ever downsig here when I can do that? You know. Uh, measly vertical range as well as we look at the hitbox here it doesn't really hit that high up i mean yeah it's decently high it's like one and a half jump heights but i can just do that or i can just do that and it covers the same area and like in a better way right it doesn't have the most knockout power although it has some um and i think the change to this is fairly simple uh what i would suggest one of two things I think if it acted like Cross's Gauntlet Down Sig, the Hand of God, like as you're charging it, the further that little spike and little nub goes and you can extend it pretty far out, I think that would be an amazing change. Because like, let's say I use it right here. Okay, cool. I can maybe cover someone trying to jump to the platform, but I hold it and then suddenly it's going over to the Azoth and hits him right there. I think that would be really cool. If that's the case, then maybe startup could be changed a little bit, although I think it's probably fine. Uh, another change that could happen with this signature is rather than having it operate light crosses just have it default start later or, or start further out so maybe hit the hit the azal from this range uh by default and never change the distance i think that could also be a decent change but yeah one of those two as it stands right now this sig is not so good uh i think it is one of the weakest sigs in the entire game not just on the spear kit um, so I definitely like to see a change, especially since I think Dusk is pretty cool. I think this N Sig is super neat. Uh, he's definitely underplayed compared to his strength, but this down Sig is not a, is not showing it, unfortunately. But yeah, up next we got another newer character uh, in the airplane guy vector. Now this signature is interesting, right? Because it's one of the coolest in the game, but I think it's the weakest land Sig, and it's the down Sig. And the reason why it's the down sig, as you can see, it has some pros. Number one, a very cool animation turns into an airplane. Number two, it has a good amount of force. It's KOing that uh, that Azoth with its grounded version. Uh, you can slide charge it. You can GC it to get distance, get back to the wall, reverse it. You can use it to spike people. You can use some fancy schmancy movement like this and get back onto the stage wall spiking people. Uh, you can GC it like right here and then cover the, that entire space on the ledge. So it's not, it, it doesn't have like, uh, it's not a total stinker, I guess is what I'm saying. It's just a little bit smelly. And the reason why it's a little bit smelly is for one primary thing. And it's unfortunately what also makes it cool. And it's the startup. The amount of time that it takes for this Azoth to get hit. I'm gonna press the button and just count in your head. That's like a full second. That's like a full second. Now count in your head how long it takes me to press the, this button and how long the Azoth takes to get hit. Yeah. That's the kind of speed that we like. Okay, obviously that's a neutral light. It's a little bit different, but how about I just go over to a, a, a different Lance character. Wait, who has Lance in this game? Did I just skip people? I guess I did. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot faster. That is significantly faster. Uh, it's just a problem of startup, really, and, and the amount of time it takes for the hitbox to come out. I get hit by this move probably more than I should, but the reason I do is because people use it so little that I actually don't even know how far the little firebombs reach down. And, uh, yeah, it just has a lot of startup for- whoops. Has a lot of startup for, uh, you know, how powerful it is. So I think one of two things could happen to this vector downsig. Number one. Just reduce the startup a little bit, make it more akin to, I don't know, Rayman Gauntlet Downsig or, or, or something like, or, or Zariel Bow Downsig. One of those two, uh, there's probably some nice middle ground. Unfortunately, that means you get to see less of the airplane mode, which is kind of sad. But uh, number two could be that the bombs fire further down, and that makes it a safer move, right? Because you're throwing out this the other person sees that it's coming out they have enough time to avoid it and then hit you most of the time uh, but if the bombs go further down you can keep the long startup sure but you'll also probably be safe uh from getting punished so i think one of those two changes could work fine uh but right now it's it's not terrible it's just not 
super good. You know, it has some utility, especially again, like I mentioned, GCing it off stage is pretty good, slide charging it, but yeah, those are those are the two things. All right, next up is hammer, and this is pretty difficult. So I, I I was thinking choosing between a few of these, but the one I landed on was Sentinel Hammer Downsig. Now I'll tell you why I chose this. You may be thinking, why didn't he pick Cassidy's Tornado? That thing takes a million years to come out. Yes, that's true. Why didn't he pick Core's little meatball move where he turns into a ball or a car if you're Jake or, you know, a cannonball if you're, if you're forearms? Because that also takes a million years to come out. And the reason why is pretty simple. Even though those moves have a billion startup like the Vector Down Sig, they also do like 40 damage which is absolutely insane. This move does 22. It does have knockout power, it's a backup SIG, has a pretty good hitbox, but it's hard to rate those as just super weak, right? Because even if they have a lot of startup, even if you don't see them in every single game, when they hit, they are monsters. But this Sentinel down SIG, it just feels like a little underwhelming, I guess, compared to other hammer kits. I was also thinking maybe Core N or, or Thor N Sig, where he charges it up, but that also has a true combo downline into N Sig. So I was like, eh, not gonna pick that. Let's go with Sentinel Hammer Down Sig. Now here's here are the pros. Number one, it has it's a step back Sig, which are pretty good. You're in the corner, bada bing, bada boom. You get some extra movement. You get a nice uh a, a nice counter attack. Number two, it has a pretty good hitbox. I mean, this thing looks like it's in 2015 beta, if we're being real. Uh, it has pretty good knockout power, decent damage, but the, it does have a downside. And the downside is kind of twofold, right? Having a backup SIG is fantastic, but this backup SIG also pushes you forward at the end of it, which most of the time when you use backup SIGs, uh, you don't want to be pushed forward. Like an Azoth bow down SIG, for example, I mean, I can even just do it right now. Part of what makes this move so strong is that you back up and then you stay backed up. Kaya does the same thing. And that's super good because it means that even if the opponent doesn't buy it, like let's say you're trying to stuff an approach and you do this and they don't approach, well that's cool because you're just backed up now, you're not going to get punished. But with Sentinel, let's say you're trying to predict an approach, they don't approach, well now you're even closer to getting punished. So that's a bit of, that is a bit of an issue. Number two is that it's kind of like, I feel like this side sig is just better. I mean, look at the damage difference. That's 27, even though it starts up faster, and that's 20. That's uh, that's 27 right there. Okay, also this move, uh, we're not going to talk about that move. But it, it feels like this side sig is just a better version of this down sig. Uh, also, Hammer already has super good grounded killing options with downlight, and the amount of risk that it takes for you to throw out that versus throwing out that uh, is different. It is reactable at times. Oh, also it does have this mechanic. If you pivot it, then you keep moving forward. That's a, I guess that's a pro. Or, or if you do it with momentum. But yeah, it just feels a little underwhelming, I suppose, uh, compared to how good other hammer signatures are, right? Like you compare this move to a Cassidy side sig on hammer, and it's pretty clear. And Sentinel already has two really good ones that you just don't really see that down sig very much, especially when compared to the damage output of these. So yeah. That's, uh, that's the weakest in my opinion. How would I change it? Well, first off, I think a way to tweak it to make it more uh, power or more usable is that this hitbox gets changed to be more updated to be modern, which will be a slight nerf, but then it gets a change similar to the Nash uh, spear down sig that just happened, which is that he moves back much quicker and then doesn't go as far forward. And that would also help with increasing the range to make it uh, more unique compared to this one. So he backs up further, backs up quicker, and then uh, strikes. And I think that is just enough to make it more of a uh, that level SIG, you know? I, I think that's all it needs. Because really, it's not a bad SIG at all. It's hard to pick when uh, hammer SIGs are as good as they are. Next up, uh, this is actually a, kind of a similar situation, which is that gauntlet signatures are pretty strong across the board it's it's hard to say a bad gauntlet signature you know a weak gauntlet signature but we're going over to the gauntlet king himself i know crazy and we're picking it because i think this nsig likely probably if i take a look at a list i may change my mind but i think this may be the weakest gauntlet signature and why is that well like i said with fate if you put this signature I don't know why I just like couldn't say signature there. If you put this signature on another legend with gauntlets, does their kit get better or does it get worse, right? If you put this on cross, instead of crosses and sig you have this, 
I think it gets worse. If you put it on Petra, I think it gets worse. If you if you put it on Core, I think it gets worse. And you know, you can keep listing Caspian. I think his bomb is better than this. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. And so just by process of elimination, I think this is the signature that if you put it on any other Gauntlet Legend, their signature kit will get worse. And so for that reason, I just missed Downlight Nair twice. That was embarrassing. I need to redeem myself. Okay, I am not redeeming myself. For that reason, I, I'm going to put it here. And what are its strengths? Well, number one, it has a good amount of force. Like, if, if we take a look at this Azoth, you saw how some of those signatures weren't really uh, packing a punch. Well, this one packs quite the punch. I mean, it's KOing from both sides of the map. It's doing 25 damage, which is uh, quite a mean amount of damage. It has this utility where if you hold it, you can actually go along the ground, which is quite interesting. I don't think other moves really work the way this one does in terms of momentum. Uh, what are some downsides? Well, it does have a little bit of startup. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to uh, to not get punished when you use. You know, you notice that you do have a quite a bit of recovery time, uh, at least you compare it to like crosses. Uh, what's another pro? It has a good amount of active frames as you slash. As you noticed, I wasn't even that accurate when I hit that Azoth there, but I still hit them because of how long this thing was active. Hitbox is pretty good. It remains consistent in force all throughout. So this is one of those moves where even though I'm saying it's the weakest signature uh, per weapon, you know, per gauntlet, I actually don't think this move needs changes. I think it has a unique property. It has a unique place in Mordex's kit. You don't see it the most, but when you do see it, it's good. And I, I think it's okay. I think it's fine. But, you know, sometimes you just gotta pick. And so now I'm gonna downline there. Because, okay, I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm under pressure while reporting. Normally I can do it fine. No, we're gonna move on. Please, God, can we move on. For blasters, I think the weakest signature is Ada's down sig. And by the way, this Gala heat blast looks actually insane. Um, I think it's this down sig. It did receive, I believe, a bit of a buff. Um not too long ago but it's still not the greatest and I think the reason is that it's kind of similar to the reasoning I've been using a lot which is that if you put it on another blaster legends kit it doesn't really get better also it's fairly punishable its hitbox is also a 2015 beta hitbox if you take a look <laughs> yeah that kind that is kind of insane hitbox size but you back up a lot and uh, it doesn't have that much of a forward range like it only pretty much reaches forward from where you were standing originally um, it's a little bit slow, you can get punished above fairly easily, and it doesn't have the most force, it doesn't do the most damage, which as you can expect from a utility signature, um, but like Ada is the type of character where it's glass cannon, you want her six to do a billion damage or have a, a, a billion amount of force, like this side sig for example, which I think is like a much better version of that down sig. And so yeah, for that reason I think you put this sig on another Blaster Legends kit, Diana, definitely Diana's guns get worse. Uh, you put on Lord Vrax, definitely Lord Vrax, definitely Cassidy, and so I just think it's the weakest. How would I change it? Well, again, kind of like Sentinel, I think adjusting the hitbox could be useful, because as it is right now, I feel like I keep saying as it stands, this signature, it's difficult to balance signatures with absurd hitboxes, because you kind of have to make it mediocre in other, uh, in other qualities and other characteristics, because otherwise it's just too oppressive. If it has a giant hitbox and a lot of force and a lot of utility, it's just like, oh, what do I even do against this? So I think reducing the hitbox size uh, is, is where uh, this move can start. And then giving it either more of this final jump back. I feel like it'd be really cool if this final jump, instead of being like a little mini leap, was a huge leap backwards. I think that would be really cool, this somersault backwards. Because then you could do something like this, where you propel yourself backwards to recovery, and it kind of looks like cannon when you're shooting yourself backwards. I think that would be super cool. Adds utility, doesn't need to change too much of the move. Uh, you know, maybe it can still have like its measly amount of force because it is a utility sig. It's a backup sig. You don't want these to be like the super killers. Um, but yeah, if that last somersault backwards just sent you flying, I think that would make this sig much more unique and fit Ada's design and be super cool. So yeah, that's my suggestion. Uh, for Bo, we're, we're, we're nearing the last few here. For Bo, this one was also really difficult. Because both signatures, generally speaking, are super good. So, I think by process of elimination, same reasoning, you put this sig on another bow kit and it gets worse, is this Yumiko side sig. And I was debating, should I pick N sig? Should I pick side sig? And I think the reason why I'm picking side sig is because N sig, it has more utility, I feel. Like, you can use it to GC and get some priority hitboxing out here. I know even though the hitbox is small, don't be deceived because this hitbox is small and this has a ton of priority. Um, 
yeah, it, it just feels like a little underwhelming. Uh, I feel like this end sig has more utility, and that's why I picked. Uh, I, that's why I didn't pick that one. This side sig, it doesn't have the most amount of force, which I guess you can expect because it's Yumiko, who is a low force design character. It just, it doesn't have the most amount of movement. It has a good amount, but it's not like Diana side sig level with that kind of hitbox. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It kind of leaves you in place a little while. It's a bit punishable. And so that's, uh, that's why I picked this one. But honestly, like Mordex, I don't think I would change this sig at all. I think it's fine. I think it's good. Uh, you know, it has a good amount of damage for what it is and for Yumiko's archetype. It has a good amount of force for what it is. You know, this move, if you hit it in the beginning, it packs a punch. If you hit it at the very end, you get less of it because it's like less built up. But, you know, if you're playing against a Yumiko, they catch your dodge in and they're like, Pachoo! okay, I totally missed. They're like, Pachoo! You just, you, you feel it, you feel the impact. Because it has multiple hits, the sound is satisfying. It has a lot going for it, and I think it's total. oh yeah, it also X pivots, so you can do movement like this, which is very cool, like super, super trip people up with your movement. Um, yeah, I think it's a fine sig. I don't think it really needs a change, but it's one of those things where you just had to pick, so I picked it. Uh, yeah, next up is Greatsword. Now this is, I mean, I, do I even need to say it? I just had to pick one, so I picked this. Uh, I thought about it. Mako Ensig, I think, has more utility. Mako Side Sig certainly has more util utility. Mako Down Sig, uh, I think, is stronger than this one. And then, obviously, I don't think I even need to say it, but yeah, this move and this move are absolutely ridiculous. Like, two of the best sigs in the entire game. So, by default, it's this move. I think this move is crazy. Look at this hitbox on the ground. I mean, it's huge. And then look at this hitbox in the air. It is huge. Okay, well, you can't see it yet. But yeah, it is actually ginormous. If anything, I would probably nerf this move. If we're being real. I, I would probably nerf or tweak the weakest greatsword sig in the game. So, let's move on, please. Uh, orb, 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 orb. Where is my boy? My boy, Thor. Now, Thor... I think this is the weakest orb sig. And it's going to be subtle, it's going to be nuanced, I feel like this one is very easily arguable for a few others. But I thought about it, right? I'm like Dusk, N-Sig, Side-Sig, Down-Sig, all three, fantastic, great. I think if you put Side-Sig, you know, if you replace this move with Dusk, Side-Sig, or Down-Sig, I think Thor improves. So I'm like, okay, okay. Fate. You give Thor any of Fate's Sigs, I guess maybe, maybe except for replacing the N-Sigs, because this one has a ton of utility. And he, uh, he's better. He's a better character. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Petra, this one was more of a, more of a, hmm, I had to think about it. You know, if you put Petra's side sig on Thor, does he get better? Well, he has this move, which is super good. But if you had, like, if he didn't have this move, and instead he had Petra side sig, I still think his side sig would be better than this down sig. So I was like, okay, you know, uh, that makes a lot of sense. It's looking like it's got to be this one. And this sig, what does it have going for it? It has a good hitbox. Fantastic hitbox, in fact. This is a super good hitbox. It has this grounded splash, or aerial splash if you use it in, air, in the air, which also, great hitbox. It kind of suctions people in. It has this charge mechanic, so you can actually kill earlier than, uh, than otherwise intended. It has a spike hitbox. Let's see if I can actually hit it. I, I've never tried. Oh yeah, that's spiked. Yeah. So you can spike people with it. And it's only downside, really, is long active frames. Because when you use it, you're committed to the entire thing. And that is pretty much the only downside to this move. Because otherwise, it's it's a great move. It has, it has good force. It has a good hitbox. It's got a lot going for it. Except it has this charge mechanic. Except for the long active frames. So how would I change this move? Well, I have an idea. And I don't know if this is a good idea. Because maybe it makes it too strong. But what if... When you use this Thor down sig, there could be a way to cancel it, right? Where you could choose to do the full thing, right? If you like pressed it twice, but let's say you pressed it once, you just do this slash into the ground, this initial splash, and then you're standing here, and then you just get up. And you can choose whether or not to do the final explosion. I feel like that would be super cool. It would add some uniqueness to this move. Because then you could do something like, oh, you choose to charge it. Or you just choose to stay there. You know, you could use it like a slide charge like I was just doing. Or you could just, just stand there and then down or the other way. I think that would be pretty cool. 
Maybe it'll make it too broken. I don't know, but I feel like that would be cool. And I'm a fan of things that are cool. So that's my suggestion. Next up, Ember. Where are you, Ember? Your name starts with E. I think the weakest guitar sig is this Ember N sig because of a few reasons. It freezes you in, well, okay. I need to back, I, I get too ahead of myself. Why is it good? It's good because it has good aerial or, or good vertical reach. Uh, it has some priority-ish, and I'll get into that a little later. Uh, it's pretty quick. You jump up pretty high. You can use it to GC like this, interrupt someone ground pounding and stuff like that. Why is it not so good? Well, it freezes you in place. You're locked there. You don't have much, uh, it completely stop. like momentum does not affect this move. So like, let's say with side sig, I can do this, right? And I end up a little further, right? Cool. But if I have momentum, I just slide with it. If I have momentum, I slide with this down sig. Very cool. But if I have momentum with this end sig, nope, freeze in place. It reminds you a little bit of Mako's end sig, which also freezes you in place, except Mako's has active input. It spikes. <laughs> it's got a lot more than just an upward slash. And this move, it just feels underwhelming. The hitbox a lot of the time feels like it should hit, but it doesn't. It's just, uh, it's it's pretty easily punishable if the other person is in the right spot because again, it just totally freezes you in place. You don't have much movement or momentum with it. Like compare this with a with a similar move, which is J on Sword and Sig, and the amount of like movement that you have, the amount of freedom you have with this move, it's so much more apparent. You get aerial drift after you use it, but this Ember and Sig, you don't really get much aerial drift. It's harder to, it's just like. I don't know, more clunky, harder to control, easier to punish, and also has a, a, a lower reward, I would say. Uh, maybe that's just me thinking, or, or like maybe that's not based in numbers, but with sword, you can just, you know, recovery again, follow them, hit them upward with nair. Uh, uh, oh, with sword nair, but with katars, it's 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 harder to do that. So yeah, I think the sig is the uh, is the weakest katar sig. How would I change it? Oh yeah, it also has the good uh, uh, attribute of being able to cover multiple dodges. Uh, because of its active frames but yeah as you can see it's active for a long time which makes it easier to punish and the hitboxes uh, towards the end aren't the largest you can hit from both sides but only towards the middle of the move so it, it's a bit strange um, I think there's a way to change this to make this move really annoying to fight and so I'll say that one first because it's actually something that I wouldn't like and I don't think they'll do but if they made this move hit grounded as you pick people up, I think that would make it a lot stronger and you see a lot more utility, but I also think that it would make it not very fun to play against. So instead, I think something interesting uh, could be to speed up the move so the slashes happen a lot faster. I think something like Jiro Sword Ensig where it goes like, Ooh, if that happened, it was like, boom, boom, and it's over. It's done. I think that could be a cool way to do it. Or another thing could just be reducing recovery frames. One of those two. One of them takes a lot more work. One of them is probably changing a number on a spreadsheet or something. I don't actually know how it works. It, it's probably more than that. I'm probably, uh, <laughs> I'm probably devaluing the actual work that, uh, that goes into balance, but yeah. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a kid, okay? I have an excuse. So yeah, those are the two suggestions I'd make for this move. This is my pick for Katars. Now, I, I just mentioned it, so I might as well say it, but I think the weakest sword signature is this. This Jiro Sword Ensig. Unlike Embers, it does pick up grounded. And uh, I think I mentioned this in my weakest sigs in the game video, if, I, if I'm not mistaking it. I'm not mistaken or maybe it's per legend that I think this sig could really benefit from a, a couple changes number one could be like that Thor orb down sig change where it, you just do one slash instead of the full thing but you know sometimes you can catch people with these active frames with the full thing so that could work uh, or, or maybe some zero zero players wouldn't like that it could be like if you press it once you leap up if you press it again you do the slash it doesn't have to be active the whole time um, it could be some. Whoop, I didn't mean to do that. It could be something like that. Um, but this sig, I don't know. Something about it just feels a bit underwhelming. Like the other arguments, I think if you put this sig on other legends' kits, I don't think it gets better. I think their kits tend to get worse. Like Koji's, I feel like is a better version of this. Uh, I showed Jayun's earlier. Although it doesn't hit grounded, it's much uh, more difficult to punish. And it just feels like the risk reward is not in favor of reward. You're active, you're out here for a long time, you can get punished from above, you can get punished from below, you can get punished from in front uh, if they just wait it out. It feels like you're kind of locked in frames for a long period of time, which doesn't really fit Jiro's archetype, I feel like. I feel like Jiro's archetype is super speed, you know, you know, hard to punish, hard to hit, but very easily dies. But this thing doesn't really feel like it fits that archetype. It's kind of 
you're locked in for a while and that doesn't really uh that doesn't seem right to me so i think that is a, uh, a possible change you press it once you leap up and then you press it again and you slash i think that could be kind of cool maybe it could produce some uh some toxic gameplay where people just leap up waiting for people to approach and if they don't approach uh they just don't press it again if they do approach they they do press it again, but I actually think that could uh, lead to some interesting approaching mix-ups in mind games, less so than uh, than super, uh, what's the word, reactive defensive play, which people tend to not like. Um, but then again, it all depends on the numbers, how much recovery time there is, how many uh, frames you're locked in for, and everything like that. So the other change suggestion, or the other suggestion that I'll give is similar to that Ember one, where you actually just attack faster. You go, boom, boom, and it's done. Ba boom and it's done instead of like slashing for a little while um that could be that could also be a tweak to make it a uh, more useful in everyday gameplay so yeah those are the two last one last one up here is going to be the axe and it's going to be ragnir our good boy ragnir and his little flame breath so what does this sig have going for it you press it once and it just you know little shoot of fire you hold it and it's active for a while so you can keep people in the corner with this move uh, as you can see, it has a bit of a disjoint. Um, what does it not have going for it? Well, you compare it to the most similar move, which is Olgrim's Lance Downsig, and that move is just straight up better because it has an aerial hitbox, so you, you actually have to like jump way over it instead of you can kind of just leap over this one. Number two, as you can see, this move like never kills. Like it's gonna kill now because I hit it twice, but yeah, they're in the deep red, and it's not gonna kill. And part of it is that angle. It hits at that angle where it just never will ever kill. Um, number three is the angle itself. So if you're keeping someone in the corner, where do you want to hit them? You want to hit them forward and you want to hit them down. Where does this move hit? It hits up. So let's say you're keeping someone in the corner with this down zig. Well, guess what? You just made their recovery easier rather than harder because you gave them more space to recover. Uh, and that's really not what you want. So the suggestion I would give is to, to give this a more horizontal angle than just straight up vertical and honestly the force can be kept where it is because it is a utility sig you don't want this thing to be killing all the time also for newer players these types of things are harder to avoid and uh you don't want to make sigs that are just super super generally speaking from a balance standpoint super super useless at top level play but then oppressive and extremely strong at lower level play and uh, I feel like if this sig just had a billion force, it would still be one of those moves where top level players probably wouldn't get hit by it very much, but lower level players would just suffer and it would be not fun. So I think that would be a healthier change. Just change the angle a bit and uh, and give our dragon breath boy a little more dragon breath to, to work with. He needs some Mentos. He needs a mint, um, but a good mint, not like a mint that'll make it worse. I should... I should stop talking. Th 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 those are all the weapons, right? I covered all my bases. I covered it all. I think I did. That should be it. Those are the weakest weapons. Or weep weakest... I said weepest. I, I need sleep. Weakest signatures per weapon, in my opinion. How I would adjust them or tweak them, if I were to do it at all. And, yeah. I hope you enjoyed. And go eat some dra dra dragon fruit. Okay, bye.